is ransomware. The time taken by the cyber attack is be between getting initial foothold in the victim's environment, deploying a ransomware, it falls in 24 hours. And uh, that, that is scary, right? So if you think like uh, the hackers are struggling and to brute force and uh, you know penetrate a remote target network, I don't think so. It's a piece of cake. They're laughing, they're joking. And uh, the hackers say, oh, my God, man, the admin password was like password, let me in. It was so simple, they didn't even throw a challenge. Okay, I'm really having fun compromising all these uh, companies. And um, this was a post by Microsoft. It was like a, you know, it, you work up the industry. What Microsoft said is, cyber criminals have seemingly unlimited monetary and technical support from the governments, like sponsors like Iran, Russia, uh, Vietnam, and um, you know North Korea. So these are state sponsor hackers, and they have billions of dollars, billions. In fact, North Korea they collect one point five billion dollars every year with ransomware fees. Ransomware fees alone. That, that's a that, that, that's a very good market. That's a crucial business for them. So Microsoft says, these guys are 2,000 employees working in a building. They go nine to five job. Their goal is target this network, target this company, bring them down. Shut the guys down. Okay? And uh, get me the emails, get me sensitive documents, get me paid. I don't care. Get me the holy grail. Then the phone call comes in. Hey, you know what? Give me $20 million before it releases information. You know what companies do? They do, they do pay. CISA's begging them, please guys do not pay. When they hit the ransomware, stop. So Microsoft's saying, normal companies, you guys are toast. Small organizations are defenseless against these state hackers. $1.5 billion, 2,000 employees. Only one target is you, you're going down. Simple as that. So what you need to do is you need to be prepared. Okay, it's not like, I am not going to be compromised. I will not get hacked. I will not get breached. No, 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 no. Those words doesn't apply anymore, guys. So today is, yes, I will get breached. My data will be published in the dark web. My organization will be in a critical state. What am I going to do about it? I'm going to handle the breach. I'm going to handle the incident response. I'm going to handle shareholders. I'm going to handle uh, you know, my customers. That preparation you need to have ready by now. So don't wait. This is not me. This is CISA saying, all right? You are going to get breached anytime, but are you prepared? So the techniques hackers use like defense evasion, credential access, persistence, command control center. These are not skills, you know, carried out by some kindergarten, some, some school kids sitting at a mother's basement drinking Coca-Cola and eating pizza, man. They are, they are really talented, skilled, professional hackers. Their job is to Make money, simple as that. It, it's it's a lucrative business. By the way, regional, thank you for inviting me. My name is Haja, and my CEO sent me here uh, to be in front of an amazing audience. And um, let's take a look. I'm going to show you what happened last month. The attacks that occurred last month. Caesars, Caesars in Las Vegas. Of course, I go there for Black Card and Defcon conference. I stay here, and um, they they were hacked. And um, the, the customer data and um, other sensitive documents were hit to the ransomware. You know what? They paid the money. It's public. $15 million. They wrote a check. Hey, please, uh, you know, don't release anything in the dark web. Protect me. So <laughs> NGM last month got hacked. NGM was so embarrassing. You know what happened when you stayed there? Your ATM machines didn't work. And when you take your card, swipe it in your room, your room, the door doesn't open. When you go to the bar and restaurant, you want to check out? No. No, you can't check in a credit card. And um, your slot machines, you want to, you know, that stopped working. So how did it happen? The, you know, the hacker only took 10 minutes with a phone call to shut down entire MGM resorts. Entire MGM resorts. The damage they incurred for this incident was $110 million. It was released last week. $110 million. What happened? Okay. Here, a bunch of hackers aged 19 to 22 bought the Las Vegas strip casino in the knees. What happened is, of course, MGM had a, uh, so this was reported on the news. Uh, 
they had um, outsourced the cybersecurity to manage services to a third party. So this hacker, supposedly he called um, the third party vendor and says, you know what, can you please lower your defenses? I need to get into the system for auditing purposes, something like that. And bingo, the doors are very open and they got in. And the hackers threatened to leak his data. They demanded 30 million ransom. And Caesar spent only half, 50 million, right? NGM didn't. So what happened? Yeah, the data was exposed to dark web and it was so damaging. And you know what is so funny is, guys, uh, last week a strip club offers free lab dance to customers affected by NGM resorts. Oh my God. $1,200 membership? If you stay in the hotel and you had an issue and your experience was really awful, your dogs couldn't open, no problem. Go to Hustler and have a nice day. You know, free lap dance for everybody who struggles. So the customers, they don't give, you know, what happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas, right? So the NGM reputation, did it take a hit? I don't think so. Okay, NGM is supposed to be a, a gambling casino. So they lost $110 million because of the damages they incurred. Shell got hacked. Okay, last month, Air France, they got hacked. Okay. Ouch, hackers managed to break into the Flying Blue, the frequent flyer program used by KLM and Air France. The hackers may have gained access to members' personal data and travel information. So if you were Air France, they have a copy of your passport. I can tell you that. Scary, yeah? It is. Volvo in Europe, they got hacked. Hackers are selling sensitive data, information on vehicles, the company sells to law enforcement. Just aware of the breach and conducting internal investigation. Hi, guys. The burger company, they're toast. They got hacked last month. Okay, they employ 5,000 people. So the thing is, Uber got hacked. These companies, they do, they're good at what they do. They're good at managing passengers on the plane. They're good at um, selling cars. But when it comes to cybersecurity, uh-huh, I don't think so. That's not the bread and butter. So, you know where the lab is. And uh, <laughs> last week, this is last week, Sony got hacked. 7,000 of customer data who played a PlayStation is exposed. Okay, And wh wh why the companies are not panicking? They are. But you don't see it on the news. But internally, it's a, it's a nightmare. For example, just go and watch this um, amazing show by Apple TV, The Morning Show, Episode 3. Okay, The Ghost in the Machine. And of course, the, the, the entire uh, network is like a CNN. They could hack. And um, the, the emails are exposed. And the salary information of the staffs are exposed. You know what happened to the organization? It was it's a disaster. It was like uh, a, a, a fighting with each other, merger gets canceled. And just, just go, I won't, I won't spoil it for you guys. A beautiful show. It's season three and um, uh, episode three. This was last month. This was in Singapore. Uh, Singapore published a national newspaper. Singapore is one of the richest countries in Asia. Okay, and they had a beautiful airports, beautiful infrastructure, amazing business, banks. They, this year, 22,000 people lost savings of $334 million. One year, not even, the year's not even over, man. $34 million to scams. One example in this article was, uh, one lady, she works in McDonald's. She's 70 years old. She get me, McDonald's, you know, she's a burgers, right? Or Chinese lady. She has a call from a bank, and um, uh, OCBC bank, and uh, the caller had a British accent. And uh, he says, uh, uh, ma'am, were you in Macau gambling? Macau is near Hong Kong. And she says, why am why, why I gambling? I'm not in Macau, I'm in, I'm in Singapore. Uh, by the way, $5,000 was um, used from your account in the casino. So I just want to make sure that you didn't make the transaction. She said, no, I didn't. Oh my God. That means like um, the hackers would have breached your account and uh, your, your, your entire savings would be gone if you don't act. So what do you want me to do? Very simple. I'm gonna send you an account number. And uh, at this particular bank, we're not authorized to transfer the money. I want you to transfer the money yourself from one account to another account. That's it. That's all you gotta do. She did, it. She did exactly that. So she trusted the British accent guy, looked professional and that guy, got away with $80,000, entire savings gone. Now the thing is, interesting story is, who does she ask for help? She goes to the government and says, you know, hey, my entire savings is gone because of the scam. So 
So she goes to the bank and says, and the bank, bank tells her, uh, you should be careful about fishing. So she tells the bank, what the hell is the fishing? What am I supposed to know about, what, what is the word? How does it work? A McDonald's lady, 80 year old girl, 70 year old lady, and um, so you, she doesn't know what fishing is. So the government has a huge issue. If the government doesn't protect the citizens from the scams and they start losing money, they won't be in power. There'll be people throw them out of power. So what the government is doing, government is struggling. They're educating cybersecurity everywhere out of 6 million people. You go to hospital, there's a sign. You go to gym, yes, there are signs and brochures about the scams. And you go to bank, and you go to airports, they are educating the entire population about cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is not only for geeks. I mean, what, what, are, what are they teaching? They're teaching about what is phishing and uh, what is smishing, what is ransomware, and what is a fake call looks like. They're not they teaching you how to manage a server and networks and uh, uh, websites. No, 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 no. This is a basic cybersecurity hygiene. That means cybersecurity is a national emergency, guys. If this didn't wake you up, Japan is even worse. So it's a national crisis. Let me put it in perspective for you. Oregon Health, three months ago, they had a data breach of 1.7, oh my God, 1.7 million patients. Okay, so what does it mean? That's definitely uh, the HIPAA violations, right? So you have the patient history, the diseases you're carrying, and who you report to, who's your doctor. Everything was breached, okay, and was exposed. So now let's talk about Hong Kong. Hong Kong last month, okay, Cortina Watch is the premium luxury watch chain in Hong Kong. They sell Rolex watches, Breitling, and, uh, and Seiko, and uh, Tag, you name it. If you're a rich guy, if you're from China, if you're a wealthy guy flying a plane, jumbo jet, or a private plane, this is where you go to buy your watch. You'll send a check for $300,000 and get that Rolex. So the entire database, all the customers, tell you what, I bought my watch from these guys. I want one of my Breitling, the pilot watch, exposed. 2.5 gigabyte database gone. So who do they report to? Nobody, because there's no regulation for this watch industry. So they got away with it. So why are these companies getting hurt? What is the problem? What is the issue here? Simple, cybersecurity professionals. Okay, I'll talk about that in a minute. Last month, the US Biden administration, the White House, okay? They released the cybersecurity workforce education strategy. Okay, the report is right there. You can download it, you can just Google it. Okay, it's a PDF document. Now, what the strategy says is, hey, cybersecurity education must be carried out by every single citizen. It's not only for the techies. Everybody must be proficient with this skill. Yes, if you're a chef, you need to know that. If you're a janitor, you need to know that. If you're a baking baker, yes. If you clean the park, yes. It's no longer a luxury skill anymore. It's a foundational cybersecurity skill. So I'm talking about like basic fishing, ransom, and those kind of stuff. So it's not optional. It's mandatory. If you don't teach these people and they get scammed, they're going to come back to the government and say, hey, what the hell you guys are doing? So why are these companies getting hacked? The problem is right here. Cybersecurity professionals. So let me talk about uh, this designation. That's uh, regional and uh, approaches to uh, we train people in Canada and U.S., that's of the world. Cybersecurity engineer, this is the highest level when it comes to the skill set, highest level. These guys are like a jumbo jet pilots with 30 years of experience. Okay. Their job is to take the passengers and, you know, go from uh, Lisbon to Tokyo and land the plane safely. So when you get these guys working for the company, the company won't tell them what to do. These guys will tell the company what to do. Okay, these guys are the pilots. So they are the go-to guys for implementing high-tech solutions, different against hacking, malware, ransomware, insider threats. So the demand for cybersecurity professionals right now, today, 4.6 million positions. US, by the way, guys, totally, they have only 1 million, that's it. Only 1 million cybersecurity professionals, okay? In a country of more than, uh, what, 300 million? Only 1 million? And 4.6 million is still vacant. That means you can apply the job right now. 
that the problem is you can. Okay, the job openings are right there in the portals, but companies are not hiring you. Yes, that's true. The vacancy is there, companies are not hiring you. Why? The problem is companies are rejecting candidates of paper certifications, amateur security skills, no experience. You bring these guys on board, your plane is going to crash. I'll tell you that. Your company is going to go down, going to be breached. So what they're looking for and regional and his job is to make sure match the experience of the candidate with the uh, organization's requirement is the employers are demanding advanced expert code writing, vulnerability assessment, penetration testing, DevSecOps, artificial intelligence, cyber intelligence, blockchain, privacy and governance. So, oh my God, that's a lot. So if you look at the job role, you have these. Architect, software developer, tester, cryptography. There is no such thing called cybersecurity professional. I'm sorry to say this, guys. It doesn't exist. Because you need to drill down to in-depth. You can't call that, I'm a doctor. You don't say that. You say, I'm a dentist. I'm a cardiologist. I'm a surgeon. You go with experience, uh, skill set. You deep down. So the problem is, you can't find a guy who can do all this, or a, or a lady who can do all this. You can't. That's the reason why companies are giving the case a boot. They apply, reject it. Apply, reject it. No, man. So I have the the, the so the programs that we came up with, and we said, create a standard. Cyber screen is a standard we set. Okay, the skill set is so high, and you got to be experienced. Now LinkedIn CEO Ryan, he made the statement. Because when you want to hire people, where do you go? You go to Indeed or you go to LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn says, nobody is asking candidates for degrees anymore. They don't care you have a master's degree in cybersecurity. They don't care you have a master's degree in software engineering. They're looking for, hey, do you have the skills? Do you have the skills of governance? Do you have the skills of incident response? Now, Google just got rid of degrees altogether. Okay, a four year degree is not a requirement for almost any role in the company. And a company says degree isn't required for most software engineering. By the way, Google is the biggest employer when it, when it comes to India. So if you look at the Google's entire uh, software engineering department, it's in Bangalore, in Hyderabad. Okay, thousand people work there. So when you want to get the job over there, you don't go and say, I'm a certification, here is it, I have a degree, please hire me. No, what they'll do is they'll give you a machine and they'll load up a software and says, you know what, you say you have Python skills, right? Code this for me. Solve this problem right there, I want to see your answer. So you can't play the fool. You can't lie. you got to do the job. It's just like, hey, I can drive a car. Here's a car, drive for me. Show me, you can drive the car. You want to be a pilot? Yeah. And you're going to put in a simulation, fly. So this is becoming normal. So no longer you can prove, hey, here's a, here's a piece of paper, please hire me. It doesn't work anymore. RCC will fill the job requirements. I'll tell you why. We have created a standard to meet all these goals, what the employees are looking for. It's not easy. It's not a cup of tea. Now, ANSI accreditation is one of the important thing for HR, for example, like regional, many places um, uh, uh, the, the candidates to the job role. Okay, and segregation means this particular program is recognized by every single HR department in the world, in the world, whether it's a Tokyo, whether it's London, whether it's in Indonesia, whether it's in uh, Australia, um, Saudi Arabia, I don't care. By the way, guys, that's my certificate. I'm the guy who created the standard. Okay, and um, when you present the certificate, it's guaranteed it'll be accepted by HR. But to get the certificate, it's not easy. Trust me, it's not. We don't give it to every Tom, Dick, and Harry. It's not meant for everyone. These are meant for highest okay, uh, leveled people who can pass the skills, who can perform a task. So the salary is $120,000. Let me tell you, nobody's going to give you a check for $120,000. Just easy. This cybersecurity engineer job is you know, a piece of cake. I, I pass some exams, at least people are going to give me a, a, a job and put me in a pedestal and, you know, I'm going to make like, you know, $1 million a, in a year. No, it's not going to, no, stop dreaming. It's not going to happen. Now, this is a, the job description of a cybersecurity engineer, okay? And most of the job description when it comes to CE 
talks about compliance, talks about responsibilities. Look at the jobs. 700,000 job listing right now. I just picked up and pasted it here before coming for this um, the session. 700,000. You just click and apply. This apply button, now apply your resume. Sorry, 99% gets rejected. All right, but people want the skill set. So what do you need? You need this. This is a nice framework created by um, the department defense books with the uh, the nice. So you have the skills, research, cyber, vulnerability, threat, cyber defense, exploitation analyst, network operation. So this is like army, man. You go to the army, you have multiple, you know, ways of maneuvering the war. That's not easy. So on top of it, I'm going to throw you the most complex, most deadliest, most potent skill is called compliance. This is what legal mumbo jumbo is. So look at look at uh, the standards over here. ISO. You got uh, SOC. You got WSAC, CDSA, PCIS, BlueSign, CS Benchmark. So when you go to organizations, say I'm going to take care of your network. First thing I'm going to say is what standard you're going to you know implement, my friend. What are you going to deploy? Can you please show me? Show my team. How are you going to do it? Do you have templates? Do you have policies? Do you have frameworks? Oh, no, I have none, but I'm the good guy because I have a paper. You know what? Take the paper and throw the trash. I don't give a damn. Do you speak this language? Do you speak this language? Because your customers are all over the world. You can't say like, um, U.S. Or organizations, my customers are U.S. I don't think so, man. Your Starbucks are all over the world. Your Microsoft customers are all over the world. Apple sells phones all over the world. So you've got to know the standards of Mexico, Chile, Argentina, Brazil. U.S. alone has this nightmarish standard. California, oh my God. Oh God. CCPA. That's another monster. So are you familiar with all these things? If the answer is no, you're rejected. That's the reason companies are rejecting you. Okay. U.S. government alone has these standards. DOD, DISA, Year, FedRAM, FIPS 140, NIST 53 standards. Now you go back to Europe, more confusion. UK, it's not part of EU, separate standard, Belgium, Netherlands, Denmark, Poland, Germany, Switzerland, France. Do you speak Asia? Could you visit in China, Taiwan, Japan, Korea, New Zealand, Singapore? The answer is no. If you do, please come on board, man. Please. I want you $120,000. I'll give $200,000 to hire you. You are the Superman we've been waiting for. But the problem is, who has the skills? I would say 0.001% premium. So one example of compliance is SEC. It actually has 12 bullet points. One of the bullet points is CISO. CISO is the guy who is responsible for the entire organization's network security. So everyone trusts him or her. Please tell us what to do. Please protect us. Let us do a job. So what is SEC? Any company that has um, uh, public listed and um, like Apple, Microsoft, Sony, Intel, Hitachi, okay, Starbucks, they have to comply to these regulations. So if you have breach, you're inform the customer within 72 hours and you're, you encrypt your data in transit and rest, blah, blah, blah. And so one of the requirements is the CISO. So they're not asking for Mickey Mouse CISO. They're asking for somebody who has the experience, who knows exactly how to run incident response, who can be trusted. So having said that, why are companies getting breached? I can go on and on. We have a site in a Distinguished Mag, I'll tell you AI. You have like hundreds of companies getting breached every month. You can see it every month, hundreds. Why is it happening? Why? I'm going to give you four reasons. The companies are too complex. The companies' networks are too complex. If you have like 7,000 machines, you know what a nightmare to manage all of them? So we don't call computers anymore. We call them endpoints. That'd be like iPads and phones and your X, Xbox machines and um, whatnot, even your glasses. I'm wearing a glass with uh, uh, Alexa built in. That's a device, kind of the internet. So do you do asset discovery? Do you do network visibility? That's number one. Number two is outdated systems. Using outdated systems, not enough cybersecurity budget. So why are you running a router why are you running EDR, XDR endpoints that's seven years old? Look, I mean, I have an iPhone, okay? And I purchased um, beginning of this year. 
And Apple comes and says, you know what, Aja? Your iPhone is outdated because we have the new flashy titanium iPhone, 30% faster. You can browse faster. You can play games faster. And you can take picture more sharper. So I'm like telling Apple, what the hell, man? You said the same thing last year. Okay, 30% faster, 20% faster, amazing phone. Now you're telling me that's outdated. I shouldn't be using that. Apple is saying, yeah, that's exactly what I'm telling you. So what, what that means in cybersecurity is you're going to prepare, okay, at a budget to upgrade your systems as new versions, a new platform comes up. Okay, I mean, that's, a, it's not like a refrigerator, guys. You have a fridge at home. You don't change the fridge. It's there forever. It doesn't apply to cybersecurity. So the third rule is no modern implementation, like zero trust architecture, micro segmentations. You're still stuck with the classic, you know, lockdown measures. And the last one, this is crucial. They have Mickey Mouse people guarding the network. Now, Palo Alto Networks, this guy said last week, last week, he said, the problem isn't that companies lack cybersecurity vendors. There are like 400 vendors if you go to Black Hat. Everybody's trying to sell you a solution. Protect your emails, protect your endpoints, protect your phones, protect your databases, data breaches, monitoring your logs, CM, XDR, oh my God, 400 vendors. So the panel also CEO says, security infrastructure may consist of a complicated assortment of vendors, some of them outdated. So he says, take the outdated, outdated iPhone, Put in the trash, get a new iPod. I'm just uh, uh, paraphrasing here. Now, companies need integrated, modernized cybersecurity systems in order to protect themselves from bad actors who are getting faster at gaining access to sensitive information. So he's saying, hey, you don't have a two to three year roadmap, modernize all of that, put in some sort of an AI stack so you can do all this in real time. The question is, do you know how much it's going to cost? Just 50 employee company, a legal company, with 20 lawyers full-time, $2 million. Do you have a budget? Write a $2 million check? That's the problem. You don't have a budget. And you know you want to be secure. It doesn't work. You pay peanuts, you get monkeys. You're better willing to pay money. You're better willing to spend money to protect your resources. Otherwise, don't be in this business. It's like cost of running an organization, infrastructure, identities, devices, application, network, data, Put them in a ZTA. This is called modern architecture. So today's organization, they're all over the place. You don't have a building. You don't have a floor to protect. 80% of IBM's employees, 280,000 employees are working from home. Nobody's coming to your office anymore. Okay. So how are you going to manage all these things? Of course, modernized implementation from classic network-based uh, deployments is, this is what Department of Defense is saying. So they issued a strategy. Every single agency in DOD, in Pentagon, must implement this. That's the blueprint. Okay, you can download it on a website. Everyday companies are getting breached because the whole way of securing things does not work anymore. So stop crying. Whenever a company gets breached, I'm laughing. I can give you a zillion reasons why you failed. Okay, so zero trust is the way to go. I'm not saying this is a bulletproof. This is a, a trusted approach by Microsoft. It seamlessly works. So what you need is, you don't need these Mickey Mouse morons. You need really skilled people, responsible, who knows what they're doing. So we wrote this standard. Cybersecurity engineer. It's not a product. It's a framework. We created a framework. Okay? And it's most advanced. It's a prestigious certification because we don't give it to every Tom, Dick, and Harry. You need to go through this particular program. And that program is six months. If anybody tells you, I'm going to make you a cybersecurity professional in three days. I'll tell you right now, it's a scam. It's a fraud. Nobody can make you a cybersecurity expert in three days. Impossible. You want five days? Oh my God, give me a break, man. So we created a program with all these components put together into a framework. Once you finish the framework, you get the RCC certifications and you're ready to fly the plane. That framework is six months. Four components. The first one, level extreme hacking. Then you got red team, blue team penetration testing. Then you investigate a breach. I told you, the CISA is saying, prepare your organization. You will get compromised. You will get breached. You will get hacked. So what do you need to do? Do you know ethics? Do you know network analysis? Do you know how to prosecute somebody in court? Do you know how to conduct investigations? You, can you think like a lawyer? Can you investigate this? Online extortion, backdoors, espionage, they have service attack. Child exploitation, employee monitoring, phishing, data breaches, mobile. 
I can go on and on and on. The answer is, you get, hell no, I can't do that. So why the hell I'm paying $200,000 for you? I'm going to kick reject. So next, let's move on. The biggest buzzword, zero trust is one. Next one is called compliance. If you don't talk compliance, all the countries have told you, right? You got to master all these terminology. Compliance like you're a lawyer. Behave like a lawyer. So you got to know PCI, HIPAA, GDPR, NISP, SOC2, and um, a certified cybersecurity compliance officer responsible. This guy is what makes organizations stick. Everybody's working in CNN because there's one guy guarding the flow of traffic, making sure malware doesn't disturb the businesses. Now, this is what the domain is. Audit, compliance, cyber intelligence. I mean, this is not a single domain, guys. This is like each domain is almost like thousand pages of documents, like a lawyer got to read, understand, practice, create policies. It's a nightmare. Trust me, my students go through hell. They want also to say, sir, can I just skip domain domain 16? I don't have physical logs. I don't go buy physical logs. Try to break that. Okay. Now, so when you go through all this, you can do this job in Pentagon. And our program is part of the DOD 8140. Okay. It's accredited by ANSI. So we, we have passed all the standards. And we're not putting these guys without a proper training. So what employees are looking for is robotics, biometrics, 5G, voice control, neural networks, blockchain, drones, zero trust architecture. Tell me something. Can you learn this in three days? This is what happened in Canada. I'm telling you companies, just, just Google it. Three days, I'll guarantee you pass. They'll tell you, I'll guarantee you pass. What the hell is that? What the hell is a guarantee pass? Oh, but hey, I'll guarantee your skill transfer. I'll guarantee you can fly a plane. I can guarantee you can, you can sail the ship. No, I'll guarantee you'll pass. I'll tell you, pardon my French, bullshit. This is it. MongoDB, Elasticsearch, Chef, Ansible, Puppet. These are the technologies you will see in a Fortune 500 companies right now, integrated beautifully. If you don't speak this language, you're out of the game. So put all this together in layers, governance, CM, perimeter security, platform security, endpoint security, and user security, and you know, spread across. And if you can put the pieces together in a beautiful puzzle, you get the $200,000 gladly. And you know what, Regis will be happy. Companies will be smiling at him. Thank you for connecting with this amazing guy called Johnson Smith, man. He is speaking what we're looking for. This is it, IAS, infrastructure service, identity management, zero trust, container security. This is the puzzle. If anybody teaches in three days, huh? the scam is going on the internet right now. I'll change my name. Regional, I'll buy you lunch for a year, man, on my watch. Seriously. Three days. It doesn't happen. So what you need is, this is a framework. You can protect, detect, respond, investigate. This is part of the NIST. This is what CISA is telling you, organizations. So you need to go and make sure, integrate all of them beautifully, Okay, and we put all these products together into a six months program. And of course, one for RCC is uh, a one month. You got two months for penetration testing, red team, blue team engagements. You got investigations. And finally, once you come out, where is your plane? You taught me how to fly a plane, right? How can I fly a plane without a plane? You need a software, right? You need software, you need uh, operating system, you need components if you want to practice at home. So, what we did, we created the software using open source, okay, EDR, IAM, and we put a silver platter for you guys. This is it, this is a platform, it's called Rochester and Wines. So when you go to a company, don't think, okay, all open source, put together, deploy, and secure. But if you have money, like $5 million security budget, more power to you. Go ahead from Palo Alto, get from Cisco, get from um, uh, Splunk, okay? So when you go there, they're giving you a plane for you to go and fly. This is what, which is the wireless, look at this. And we license it to a RCCE guys. And of course, there's only one component out of the four components is one month. So where exactly we stand over here is right at the top. RCC is right at the top, okay? That means like we are not interested in training and giving people certificates. You have to do the job. This is not a vertical, this is all rounder. You speak the language. Another thing what you want to do is, when you go to Black Hat, oh my God, I, I cringe, man. I really cringe. 
I see guys in Defcon Black account walking in Bermuda shorts, slippers, mocking out of them. So I, what the hell are you doing, man? I'm a cybersecurity professional. I take care of a company's network. Seriously? You look like a buffoon. You look like a clown. You walk like that and go and talk to CEO. Hey, give me a check for $3 million. He's going to write a check for you. You won't even sit with the other executors. You don't fit in. So if you want to be respected, if you want to be taken seriously, you better dress seriously. You better project your confidence seriously. So this is standard he created. Not too professional, not too casual. So we call it semi-casual. You have jeans and you wear the top, a jacket. That's it. So you don't look like an insurance salesman. Okay, I'm done. So regional, that's my first part. Second part. I've got bad news for you. Very, very bad news. You're not going to like it. This is not only for you, regional, the <laughs> entire world. The bad news is AI is the next big technological revolution. Everybody I talk about is talking about AI. Today, we need to be either adopt artificial intelligence or be ridden by it. So what is the what is the next two, the last two revolution? Electricity. Electricity changes everything. Okay? It brought us the industrial revolution. It brought us the, the, the train ships, airplanes. Second one was internet. Internet revolution, how we conduct business, how we socialize. The third revolution right now happening, guys. Right now happening is AI. I'll show you how Rochester, we transformed the entire company. Within one month, I did that. Transformed the entire company to AI. And how I <laughs> save money, I'll show you that as well. So today, if you go to any board, two topics will be on the uh, agenda. One is cybersecurity, second one is AI. If it's not the agenda, the company will not last. So leaders have been trying to understand the impact of technology on the companies and employees are worried. So this is Arvind Krishna, IBM CEO. He fired, almost like, sorry, not fired, I would use the word, he let go, okay? Approximately 16,000 people. I'm not, I don't remember the exact number. Tech guys. Yeah. Months ago. So he says, AI would take up 50% of new jobs. And IBM totally has 280,000 employees all over the world. 280,000. 80% of them working from home. So he's saying, yeah, hell yeah. I'm not going to cut a check to hire a programmer in which AI can throw code for me. Now, this is an amazing cartoon. I love this. Uh, so the small girl is asking, mom, can you please explain to me what a climate change is? The mom says, don't ask me, ask chat GPT. What does it mean? That means, you know, Google is not relevant anymore. I, I don't go to Google search except um, looking for restaurants and, you know, and uh, uh, looking for stock price. That's about it. So anything else, I ask for chatbot. Because look at, if you ask, if you ask uh, Google, hey, Google, can you please give me interpretation of Bhagavad Gita? Google doesn't know the answer. It doesn't. Google will give you 10 links and say, you know what, go to these guys. And they have the answer for you. So you click on the first link, you don't, you know, you don't like the answer. You go back and click the second link, you don't like the answer. Third, you know, you probably be doing this, right? So you know this. These websites, they're gaming the system with called search engine ranking to be on the first page. So mm -hmm. Google is not relevant anymore. Now, this is by 2030. 2.5 million jobs will be gone. Now, this year, US alone, 90,000 jobs went to AI. They lost. Programmers, developers, okay, paralegal. Now, who are these guys? What, first of all, what can GI, AI create, generate AI? Text-based content, blog, social media, images, music, videos. I'll show you the examples of this in my presentation. Okay, games, predictive analysis, personalized content, synthetic data, neural network architectures, drugs and chemicals, Academic content, data models, code, ebooks, poems, and songs. Oh my God. Companies love this technology because it saves money. And people who are running this are scared they lose jobs. So don't tell me companies, the company loves us. I'm a many organization. I transform my organization to 3 AI. I saved so much money. I'll share with you guys. So oh. people who came for me, they're, they're scared. Similarly, look at this. Uh, which countries are winning the AI race? Now, every flow is 50 startups. So today, if you go to any organization and say, you know what, I'd like to have a startup in cybersecurity, please get out. Sorry. It's old, outdated. 
Tell me to tell him to start a blockchain. Get out. How about IoT? Get out. How about AI? Please come in. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Tell me. Tell me what are going to do AI. This is what companies are doing right now. So you have the US, China, UK, Israel, Canada, Singapore, Germany, Japan, India, France. They got the message. They're already prepared. Okay, for the next generation of companies to boot air with the funding, with support, and um, with governance less less participation in this economy. Now, here's an option. I have bad news for you guys. This is a study with Forrester. Forrester said the uh, the occupation uh, that will be replaced with a job role, women will be more likely to be replaced than men by AI. That's the statistic of geopolitical features right there. That's uh, very sad. So, I have Aja, I have to interrupt. You will have to wrap up this presentation, but we can bring you back next month because my second segment is about to begin at one o'clock. Um, so if you want to just wrap up and we'll bring you back uh, next month, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah, probably a three months down e the road. Excellent presentation, by the way. Excellent. Yeah. Right, okay. So just give me one minute. Just you're recording, right? Just take this yes. off. Yes. Everybody, like, I'm yeah, uh, next week I'm presenting to Sarawak to 1,200 students in university. Fantastic. Somebody's got their audio on. Can you turn your audio off, please? Thank you. Okay. Go right ahead. It's an excellent presentation. I really appreciate this. And we'll do part two next month. But there are questions, I'm sure. Yeah, we have questions. People have many questions and we need to ask. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I got another 50 slides, guys. And um, yeah, so you'll have to wrap <laughs> we'll it up. We'll do that next month. All right, uh, let's bring everybody into the fold. Got to get uh, some people some help, man. Yeah. Got people to give people help, man. Yeah, if you can uh, stop sharing, I will bring everybody into question mode. I have to bring my other authors in. Yeah, but this was excellent, by the way. Hard oh, yeah. I mean, you're like an encyclopedia. Yeah, yeah. Okay, All right, here yeah, you are. Uh, Anybody has questions before we wrap the segment up and go to segment two? What do people do? <laughs> what do we do? Uh, okay, Haja, so you touched upon AI, and I think that's absolutely relevant. Uh, so do you think that AI can help with cybersecurity? Uh, okay, first of all, uh, how do you write software? And I, I, I didn't give me a chance to show you my presentation. So what we did is um, uh, we created a program called uh, Vulnerability Analysis and Threat Detection. It's a platform and um, which sees thread live and plots it on the map and advises you and recommends. This is powered by AI. 90% of the code was written by artificial intelligence. 90%. Python, Node.js, Java. We didn't hire a programmer. We told the AI exactly what it want and it gave us function by function integrated together. So if you ask me cybersecurity, how AI plays in cybersecurity, I would say that today, you, you, if you don't use AI, you will not go to market in six to eight months. With AI, you can go to the market within a week. Because I want to show you that. Yeah. We have that presentation. We'll do okay. it part two. So, we'll do it part two next month. Next we'll month, do AI month. and cybersecurity. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Wow. Wow. But it was really, really uh, that, awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, All right, everybody. I want to thank uh, Haja and Reginald for putting this fantastic presentation together. Does anyone have any questions before we move to segment two? Okay. So let okay. me. All right, guys. Um, thank, thank you. So much. No, thank uh, you. You thank were you, awesome. I mean, uh, yeah, I, you were. You gave us some really. I mean, gave us a, a. We're sitting on terror box, man. <laughs> That's sitting true. on terror box. That's true. You know? I mean, uh, so you're watching Brightside Global Trade TV, and we will bring Haja and Reginald back for part two, AI and cybersecurity. Uh, so today we were just talking about cybersecurity jobs and careers, 
And uh, Reginald, if you can quickly tell us how people can contact you, uh, that would be awesome. And then I'm going to wrap this segment up and bring on the authors. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, Elizabeth. Um, on the cybersecurity recruitment piece, um, I can be contacted at Reginald at DNA Legacy Group dot com and i will put my information in the chat so people can uh be able to copy it down if they want to or and i can talk to them one-on-one -on -one or whatever is best for that situation uh thank for the opportunity to give us a uh, um, a chance to share about this industry and how it affects the entire world and all the people in it thank you so much thank you both thank you Reggie. that was great everybody please give them a round of thank applause you. that was Appreciate excellent that. thank you so much uh, uh, and let me stop uh